How's she going, eh? So today we got a uh, we got ourselves a Cub Cadet LX42, whatever GT 2400 million super duperty pooper XT2 Enduro Series Cub Cadet with a Kroller 7000 22 horsepower big timer and the automatic spray off nozzle. Ugh. Full of crap. Because it's not used. Anyway, the customer complaint is thing surges, uh, hard starts. Now I can't even get the thing to start. The customer has gone ahead and changed the spark plugs, the oil, the fuel pump, the carburetor, the air filter, and uh, I believe that was the extent of it. We just make sure we got some fuel. We got some gas in here, nice and clean. Tank looks okay. It's not full of crud. Pull the old air filter off. Crawler Commander, Polar 7000. Do not operate with the engine cover removed or you will be shot immediately. Well, I see something suspicious. A, there's your first problem right there. Why they ever felt the need to put auto chokes on anything. It's not that hard to move a lever. It really isn't. But this is the new fancy fandangle crap. But you notice anything wrong there? Why is that choke lever wide open? I'm going to go with the auto choke is not working properly. It's not choking. Why isn't the auto choke choking? He changed a bunch of parts in here. And I'm just going to have to face base guess that he got this thing changed over correctly. Our fuel shut off solenoid. We can see if that's working. Anyway, we'll move on. We'll move through here and see what we find. I'm going to pull the fuel line off and we'll check that, make sure we have fuel, make sure we have spark, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, I pulled the uh, fuel pump off here. We'll just see, I'm pretty sure it's working, but we'll just see if she's shooting the old goo out properly. Jesus, God damn it. Looks like fuel to me. Let's check Sparky. Sparky Sparky next. Where'd the Sparky Sparky tester go? It's just generic auto store, auto stoner, O'Hiley's, uh, you know, special. Or maybe I got it on Gamazon, I don't remember. So, let's see if we got Spark. We got spark there. It looks like excellent routing. If you want to cremate your boot, if you want to cremate your booty. All right. Sparking. It's kind of hard to see, but there is spark now. Is that spark strong enough? We appear to have fuel. We appear to have spark. Um, we likely have timing. Uh, so, we have a starter motor that's working. So my suspicion is this damn auto choke. And like I said, not 100% how that works. And this looks like it's a bit of a pain, so I'm going to pull this off and this cover so we can get underneath there and uh, we'll have a gander at the auto choke. Here's the deal. I pulled off this cover and this lever right here from, I just watched an opera, theory and operation video. There's a thermostat, comes from the oil pressure, goes through the oil pressure sensor, blah, 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 blah. This rod was not on. 
it was basically backwards and just like stuck through here and it popped right back off because it was the wrong way. So it is only supposed to move so far, like you see here, this. There seem to be like four positions according to Kroller. So that's what's going on there. The original reason they started messing with this thing is because they were having a surging issue with it. So, you know, hopefully it's not this intake manifold or something, but so yeah, two, th two things. This rod was none. So it, this thing was just wide open. And then also this piece, which this is going to be <coughs> kind of difficult to show you guys, but I'll try and do my best. This sucker goes on here. There's just a PCV line that goes right there. It doesn't really matter that much right now, but this has to go on with your gasket and then this little white slot here needs to slide over. See that white slot down there? That white slot right there needs to go on this pin. Would you imagine that, my friend? If you hook the auto choke up, it actually runs. Now we'll have to see about the surging issue they were talking about, because they were saying it only happens when it's warmed up, so. One cylinder? Is it going down to one cylinder? I think it might be cutting out on one cylinder. Just, you know, based on the weirdness of that, I cannot imagine any other reason uh, for what's going on there. So uh, we can put the spark tester on each cylinder and see if we're losing a cylinder to and fro. That's my guess. This is not surging in any typical surging sense. This sounds like something else. Now suspiciously it's not doing it. Oh, there we go. I need to grab something that I'm not gonna end up burning myself with. If this plug wire over here doesn't look that great. So, let me think about this for a second. The spark does look a little bit weak, to be honest with you, so I think maybe we'll pull off, we'll pull off the fuel pump, get the cover off, and then we'll uh, see how the coil just for fun looks. If it looks terrible or if it looks like it's sort of set up okay. Oh, there's the magnet, okay. Now my hair be. <coughs> Let me make sure I'm turning this the right way. That's what I thought, okay. Let's see. It looks pretty tight there. And, uh, we'll, we'll check them. We'll check them just for fun. I think... I don't want to jinx myself, but this might be a stinky bastard. Alright, so our gap is definitely off on the coils now. Is it off enough to create this issue? I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely off, so... Um, just for example, that's a ten thousandth. It says the in the specs it's supposed to be eight, and I think 
Looks even bigger than that. Like, you could probably put a 12 in there. Let's try 14. Yeah, 14 thousandths fits. Uh, we're like double the air gap here, so let's hope this is our issue. That'd be kind of nice. I'm going to do these gaps. They're a pain in the butt, but you got to loosen these screws, and then your magnet tries to stick. And anyway, it takes some finagling around, so just, you know, you kind of got to get the one side tight enough to move it, but not tight enough so the magnet will pull it in, and bleebity blabbity. Yo, schmo, schmabbly. Are you with me? Bye. Boys. Boys and girls. I was blowing the grass out of this thing because the auto choke's got an air vein. So, if you have an air vein, you likely want to have your fan on your mower as clean as possible. It's just, here's the issue. People don't maintain their lawnmowers like their cars. Whether they should or not, you know, I think people should do a better job, but, you know, it's not. So even if they're doing now the basic maintenance stuff, like changing oil and everything, don't matter because you got all these extra complicated systems. I have no idea how these coils got so far out of spec. That seems nuts to me. The other thing is you can't test the motors anymore without this cover on, which is kind of annoying because of this damn air vein. So, just stupid shit like that. I just don't really understand, but what do I know? I'm not an engineer, so... I don't want to jinx myself, but... it sounds better already. But we'll see. I'm suspicious of some sort of weird, bizarre electrical fault. Still seem to be hearing those, what almost sounds like misfires, which seems kind of strange. Let her run for a while. Oh, cut out again. That's running on one cylinder. Let's find out what cylinder it's running on. Because it is really running on one cylinder right now. All right. firing on one cylinder. We certainly can see now that that cylinder is not working half the time. So the question is, is it just the coil? All right, so I think I got it figured out. It is gonna be this coil pack right here that's bad. Um, I checked the resistance on both of these, which I'm not even sure is something you can actually do to check them, but this guy's got some issues for sure. And I think a lot of these newer coils have some solid state stuff inside of them, so... Anyway, I can run this thing. Essentially, it runs fine on just this one cylinder. Makes no difference a lot of the time if I pull this plug off. This one will intermittently come on and off. So, one more thing I'm going to do just for covering my own ass is uh, do a compression test on both sides. This is the guy that's having some intermittent firing issues, which I don't know if you can really tell from that plug. It doesn't scream anything obvious to me, but let's compare it to this side. Maybe I'll this, side. this guy might be a little whiter. No, he's actually got more soot on him because he's actually burning. So there's your difference. 
If you guys can see that, this guy definitely has more soot. As if he's actually been firing and doing something, whereas this guy hasn't really been. This would be left side. The only problem is this stupid thing. Uh, I gotta hold that open. You want to uh, make sure air can get into the cylinders. So, let me shut you guys up right there. Okay. I'm trying to get this thing to start. So, this is the. I want that choke to be open, and then I want the. Beautiful. Let's get that out. It's hard to hold this flapper up with all that stuff. Not really screwed it all the way either. Let's try again. 180. So yeah, we're good. Good compression. I'm gonna get the coil over here and uh, we'll finish this video when it comes in. Hey boys. All right, so we got the, uh, we got this old bugger all set. New coils are installed. And I just wanna show you that I also put some new fuel in it, rec fuel. But just to show you that she's Running properly now. No more weird cutting out. I checked from here to here and uh you know with all the wires unplugged and they were different from one side to the other the other one one of them the one that wasn't uh, working properly was definitely slightly shorted out it was a couple i think was it a couple hundred thousand ohms less just with my multimeter so likely the insulation or something had been breaking down or however these things work internally I think it might be like solid state shit or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video or you got anything useful out of it or was just enjoyable, like and sub. Peace.